Vegeta is the prince of all Saiyans. But why does Vegeta always refer to himself as the prince of all Saiyans, even though his dad died and has been dead for many years, and thus that should make him the king of all Saiyans, theoretically? Why does being the prince of all Saiyans matter so much to Vegeta? Well, on this video, I'm going to get deep with you guys and really dissect the mind of the prince himself. I, Vegeta, the prince of all Saiyans, orders you to subscribe and follow Geekdom 101 on these social media platforms. I think when you do a character study on Vegeta, I think it's always fun because he's one of the more complex and interesting characters in Dragon Ball Z. In fact, he might be the most interesting, at least to analyze. And I think that's part of the reason as to why he's so popular. When it comes to Vegeta, everybody knows that he's the Prince of All Saiyans because he always says that. He always refers to himself as the Prince. He does it in both the Japanese version and the dub and all the other dubs around well, all the other good dubs around the world. Vegeta is definitely proud of his heritage, even though he doesn't necessarily care about the other members of his race. He is proud of who he is and where he comes from. But why is he proud of who he is and where he comes from? Does it have to do with his connections to his family or his race? Not really. There's a lot of really deep things going on in Vegeta's head that I think might be overlooked sometimes, so I want to bring those to your attention. Now, the question I posed at the beginning of the video was, why does he call himself the Prince of All Saiyans even years after his father was killed by Frieza? Would that not automatically promote him into being the king? And a lot of people's theory on that is because he has respect for his dad. And I think there may be something to that. Even though I feel the anime tries to establish a connection between Vegeta and King Vegeta way, way more than the manga. King Vegeta has tons of scenes in the anime that are anime exclusive that help us, the viewer, not only see who he was, but also see his connection to Vegeta, including that infamous scene where Frieza kills King Vegeta with one punch. <laughs> So even though the Saiyan race has been extinct for several years, Vegeta constantly says that he's the prince of all Saiyans. And when you really analyze this, he's not saying it to his opponent, he's saying it to himself. I want you to remember that I said that because there are some very deep psychological things going on with this character. Vegeta saying that he's the prince of all Saiyans is not something that he says because he wants to have rule or dominion over peasants or anything like that. It's not like the king, prince, peasant type of relationship. He doesn't really care about the Saiyan race. He doesn't care about dominating them or being their ruler. And as the series progresses and he has a child and marries Bulma, he becomes more and more disconnected from that idea. Vegeta never really cared about ruling over the Saiyans. Which is why I find it interesting when a lot of fans ask, well, why doesn't Vegeta try to resurrect the Saiyans, especially now with the Super Dragon Balls? He could bring back the entire planet Vegeta. That's because he really doesn't care. As a character, he doesn't give a damn. But then that begs the question, why does he refer to himself as the prince all the time? Why does it mean so much to him? Well, to figure this out, you have to really look at the race that he's representing and his upbringing. One thing that people have to remember about the Saiyans and about Frieza's clan and the whole space empire is that this is a class-based society. It's called social stratification. What that basically means is that based upon your occupation, income, wealth, and social status and power, you are deemed a certain class. You are categorized a certain way. This is something that happens in the real world. Social complexity is something that is a very real thing. But in the fictional world of Dragon Ball, especially in the Saiyan society, it's not based on income or wealth. It's entirely based on power level. It's entirely based on what your battle power is, what your battle power reading is when you are a child. When Saiyan babies are born, they are measured for power, and immediately based upon that reading, they are put into a specific class. Obviously, Kakarot, who is Goku, was a low-class Saiyan, which is why in the early part of Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta and Raditz even refer to him as such. Then you have Nappa, who is a member of the elite class, and you have Vegeta, who's a member of the super elite class. And it is because of this that Vegeta 
and Napa get so much respect and are heralded so highly. In fact, if you go back to early Dragon Ball Z and really analyze the manga, Vegeta does not refer to himself as the prince until the Namek arc. This is a Toriyama retcon, or at least somewhat of a retcon, in that originally Vegeta was just a super elite. His ties to the royal blood weren't really established until the Namek saga. So, that tells me that Toriyama's idea behind the class-based system was always prevalent, but later on, he decided to add a layer to Vegeta by claiming that he was the prince, and he did this as a writer to sort of establish a deeper connection between Vegeta and his family so that his conflict with Frieza would be much more personal. This is a very good writing, good retcon by Toriyama. I think he did a fantastic job by making him the prince, and he also used that as a line that Vegeta would constantly repeat to himself. Now, why does Vegeta constantly refer to himself as the prince if he doesn't care or give a damn, really, about his race? Even though, again, I think part of him does, he's not really losing sleep over the fact that the Saiyans are dead. He's always obsessing over fighting, and that's really the key thing here. For the majority of the Dragon Ball Z series, Vegeta is a very, very insecure and very self-centered person. He's very selfish, and it took several years, him getting married, having trunks, to really begin that change that would develop Vegeta into the character that he is in Dragon Ball Super. But before that... All he cared about was his obsession over surpassing Kakarot. Why is he so obsessed with surpassing Kakarot? Well, the reason why he's so obsessed specifically with him is because from childhood, Vegeta has been programmed and brainwashed to believe that the power level reading you have as a child somehow makes you better, grander, more deserving, more regal than a lowly, low-class Saiyan. So along comes Goku, who has figured out through various means of training how to make himself stronger and surpass Vegeta despite all of the technological wizardry that programmed Vegeta into thinking it was impossible. Most of the time when you're dealing with hunter-gatherer societies and cultures, the alpha male is the one who stands out as the leader of the pack. But in this case, that alpha male is determined by an arbitrary number that's assigned to you by some computer when you're born not even taking into account that a low class warrior could train and learn the deeper aspects of martial arts and surpass anybody of his own ilk if done correctly these guys were so one dimensional and so close minded that they could not accept that and the same goes for Vegeta even when he learned how to adapt and how to become a better fighter and how to read energy and just overall improve his game he still could not get over the fact that that number and that all the praise that was given to him since he was a little boy because he was born with a high power level was complete nonsense and it did not even matter and Goku was the one who opened his eyes to the fact that Frieza's society, although very technologically advanced, was really, really behind the times as far as figuring out who really is the strongest. At the end of the Bardock special, when Nappa tells a young five-year-old Vegeta that his father and that the whole planet was destroyed, Vegeta doesn't give a damn, and even Nappa himself is surprised at this. He showed no concern because to him, Power is everything, even more so than family or bloodline. I mean, look at the story of Tarble, which was written by Toriyama, as was the entire Yo Sun Goku special, or OVA. Tarble was banished away to other planets because of how weak he was. And even though he is also Prince Vegeta's brother, King Vegeta's son, shouldn't he be Prince Tarble? Should he not be heir to the throne of planet Vegeta? No. Why? Because he was a low-class warrior. Class with power levels are more important than anything to these people. So throughout most of Vegeta's young life, he was obsessed with defeating anybody who was stronger than him, including Frieza and of course Goku, whereas Goku never really wanted to kill people stronger than him, he just wanted to test out his own power. Vegeta and him are very similar, but different in that Vegeta was much more ruthless throughout most of the series, whereas Goku didn't really care so much about ending someone's life over just defeating them in battle and having a good time while doing it. So why does Vegeta refer to himself as the Prince of All Saiyans? 
it's a constant reminder that he gives himself of what he was brainwashed with since he was a kid that took several years of deprogramming for him to get over. It's a constant reminder and motivational tool for him to constantly try to be stronger for better or for worse to reclaim his birthright as the strongest warrior in the universe. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share the video out, subscribe if you have not, and punch the bell so that you get notified whenever I upload. I love doing videos like this. I want to do more of these. And if you want more, let me know in the comments and we'll do more deconstructions of characters and little nuances of Dragon Ball because really, Toriyama is a masterful character creator. He knows what the hell he's doing, especially back then when he was writing Dragon Dragon Ball the first time, the manga. So stuff like this I love to talk about and I hope that you enjoyed it too. Thank you and I will talk to you guys next time.